Mohammed, thanks so much uh, for joining us. Really great to have you today. Just take us a little bit uh, from the beginning. Tell, tell us a bit about your background and maybe where you were before, at the start of this journey, before you, you had published these papers and, and gotten into top doctoral programs. Yeah, uh, once again, everybody, good, uh, good afternoon. And David, thank you very much for having me. Thank you, thank you for giving me the opportunity to share my experience. With, uh, with all the members of Fast Track Grad. So um, I, I joined Fast Track uh, towards the last quarter of last year. And then when I joined, I had um, little experience, especially publishing as uh, first author. So um, when I joined David, I, I, I had the typical roadmap session with him. And um, if you remember, David, I think we sort of highlighted a trajectory where we'd wanted me to get within six months, within six months. And um, at that time, it was uh, to get published and then to, set, to send out uh, applications. And to be honest with you, I myself wasn't expecting that I would publish uh, three articles <laughs> within that time. But um, as, um, as fate would have it, I was, uh, I think I, I was on the right side of things and um, I got to publish my own systematic review as first author from start to finish. And um, I was also able to be part of two very, very important, very, very powerful publications. And um, so I, uh, I think I'm very, very grateful for that. And also I was uh, able to meet my most, uh, uh, my most ambitious goal or my most um, what I had most priority for, which was getting admitted into uh, good doctoral programs. Not only that, getting admitted with funding as well. So I think um, was where I was, and I think this is where I am now. Tell, tell us a little bit, Mohammed, uh, a bit like what, so concretely. I mean, how did you? What was it like working with the program to take you from this point of not having had that research experience before? I mean, you're obviously accomplished physician, military experience, uh, but how, how did I mean, how did that work? What was what, what was that like? Did, did you have any moments where things just kind of clicked into place? There, there, there's always um, a lot of value in having the right mentorship, and having the right people that would set you um, on, on the right track. Uh, to be honest with you, if I hadn't had that conversation we had about you in the roadmap session about uh, pursuing a systematic review on migrants and uh, ethnic minorities right where the debate was at, I don't think I would have come up with that myself. So I think that that was the key aha moment for me. So tell me, yeah, tell me a little bit more about that because I think that that's really important about how, uh, how we, we found that right topic for you. I think a lot of students struggle to find a good topic um, and wonder how that would work. Can, can you share a little bit about that since you said that was an aha moment? Well, I think if, if you'd allow me to share the, uh, the, some of the secrets in the group, then fine. <laughs> yeah, uh, that, yeah. You know, I, 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 think, I make these open secrets because I want, want to see everybody thrive. <laughs> yes, um, so there is, uh, the, the, there is this um, very, very nice Venn diagram, I think you, 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 you took us through which uh, I think it's one of the cycles is about what the debate is, the other is about the feasibility, and then the other is about uh, your passion and that, and, and, and that topic. So for me, we were able to find where the debate was. The debate was around COVID, was about vaccine inequities, and then it was also feasible because a lot of studies were coming out at a very, very rapid pace. And then also we're able to synthesize a very, very good research question that we felt would answer a very, very huge uh, question that would fill in a very huge uh, gap in the literature. And then we were also able to key in into something I was passionate about, which is, which is migrants, and then which is uh, also inequities. Um, I've worked with people who are displaced, I've worked with refugees. So this, is, this was a very, very passionate uh, uh, demographic for me. So at the intersection of all this is what we call the sweet spot. So we were able to find my sweet spot there. And um, from then, I think uh, everything was just falling into place. On your side, 
because you also balance because you, you're running full time job at the same time. How how did you manage to, to balance that that time on, on the on the review? The, the, I think that that's the thing. If if you don't know that they, that these short cost, uh, sh uh, shortcuts exist, I don't even want to use a shortcuts. Uh, I think it's 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 a misnomer. Uh, if, if you don't know that there are efficient ways to do this, then I think you'd spend most of your time trying to do a lot and which you might not be able to and you get overwhelmed at the end of the day. But if, if someone is there to show you the most effective or the most eff uh, efficient strategies to get this done, uh, if that person has done it uh, several times and has seen the result, he has done it for himself and his students as well. So you would have that fit in the process. You would, they would, you, there would be that fidelity, you would believe in the process, and then you would be able to stick to it. And yes, like you said, there are times when you feel uh, you're a bit struck there, but that is why um, the mentor or the coach or the grad coach is accessible to you. And um, you'll be able to put you through some of these things. So I've been able to be efficient, one, because not only uh, in the group, we don't only talk about research, research all the time. So there is there is the well-being component. There is how you can get support from other colleagues as well. And um, other people have been in the same boat, like you said in the group, if you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go further, go with other people. So my ability to utilize all these resources and then bring them to bear, I think was what made my work more efficient. Tell me a bit about applying and tell me how the research fit in with that application process for you. You're actually right. It, it sort of, uh, it was sort of coming in in the way, but in a very, very good way as well. And, I, and, I, and, I, and I, I'll tell you how. So through this research, I was able to um, demonstrate my interest in the field and demonstrate my commitment towards what I was, uh, what I was pursuing, um, long-term commitment. And um, with that, we were able to identify very, very key uh, people in the field that we felt would really contribute to the paper. And um, one of them was uh, Professor Sandro Galea, whom um, I'm happy to see I'll be working with anytime soon, <laughs> not, not, to, not to put the cat ahead of the horse, but we, I know we'll get there. But um, so uh, we were able to in a very very good body of work, and we uh, and we and we sent it to him, and uh, he was very impressed with the work. He also made the work better in the sense that he was able to help us synthesize the result in ways which um, would make it more more topical and uh, sort of make it more foolproof, make the research work very very strong. Um, I had other people as well included on the paper, but it's there's always a value of having someone who is right in the space or deep of things. And I, th this hasn't only been for me as well. You know, I think I, I on, on some other people in the group um, you, who whom you've brokered network with, uh, you've been able to bring uh, people, and I think still in the process of bringing other people into your students' papers to make them not only more visible, but more robust as well. So um, with that, I was able to anchor my, uh, uh, my applications with a very, very strong uh, paper. And um, I believe that really, really helped uh, in the, during the application screenings. It made me probably stand out among other candidates as well. Yeah, and, and I mean the applications went went well. I mean, where, which places did you get into? Uh, well, <laughs> I think I remember one. You got into the the very top program in in your field, which was Johns Hopkins. Um, which other ones did you get into? Uh, the other one was uh, Berkeley and um, Boston University, and also um, was on the wait list for or still on the wait list for Harvard, but. Um, <laughs> I don't think I would. Uh, my mind is completely made up now. So, <laughs> are there any other ways that, that the public publishing papers has, has helped you? Um, yeah, uh, very much. Um, starting starting a paper from start to finish on your own, 
it gives you self-belief and confidence that you can also go for more research, you can contribute to the field. And I think that's that's a very, very amazing feeling, more than more than anything else, to know that your 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 contributions matter. You know? mm. Because that's that's what it's it's like. It's being accepted by your peers. Probably that's what it's called peer reviewed. You're being mm. accepted, you're being accepted by your peers that yes, you're welcome to the fold of academia or research or contributing to knowledge and uh, ultimately to uh, improving the lives of people in my own uh, in my own field which is public health or whatever field even if it's in engineering or social science whatever it is you're trying to contribute to humanity so I think it it, it, it kind of feels good in a way and then to see it out there and to see other people as well people who you know people who you don't know sharing the paper and making comments about it it's 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 very very uplifting. I, I, I would say so. Yeah. If I want to ask you at the beginning, if we were having this conversation, I remember six months ago, and I said, "Mohammed, you know, in six months you're going to have three three papers out and uh, and uh, get full rides and say no to the top university, uh, to the the ranked top program in your field." I mean, I, I don't know. I don't know if you would have believed me. I I, I hardly think so. I would have hoped, but um, with a very cautious optimism, but. <laughs> Um, yeah, I think it, it seems too good to be true, but yeah, it's <laughs> that's how life is. I believe with with the right with the right mentorship and uh, with the right resources, I think all of us, not only me, anybody, given this type of opportunity, would achieve the same results. I'm not in any way special, but um, I think it's it speaks to what you're doing, and thank you for that. As well. uh, Muhammad, any last parting thoughts or, or words for people watching? Well. Um, I, I think I think I can't uh, I can't say this I can't overemphasize this, but I think working with you has been really really amazing, in 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 many ways than one. Um, I think I've I've, uh, I've found firsthand value in this, and um, you've always encouraged us to be ambitious, and I think that's that, that really comes true from the type of topics we take on to uh, our applications, you know. Um, I think I, we didn't mention this during the during this session, but I think your your application, my, your help during my application was very very valuable. You know, you you've 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 really coached us. I think us in the group that were applying to the program have had the extra <laughs> the extra um, uh, distance from um, part from you. So uh, thank you very much, and um, I'm really hoping to. Uh, meet new people and learn from them as well and share whatever little knowledge I've, I've acquired from the group as well.